Valentine's Day, full of love hearts, roses, champagne, and if you're lucky, a glittering diamond. It's romantic, it's fun, it's full of love, it's full of hidden evil. Who picked those flowers and cocoa beans? Whose hand first uncovered your diamond? What kind of conditions were they working under? Scratch the surface and what you find isn't always as pretty as it first appears. With the help of the experts, we're going to find out how to choose your Valentine's gifts with a clear conscience. Ever popular on Valentine's Day are flowers and I'm joined here on the sofa by Tom Seven from Tom Flowers in London. So Tom, what are the potential ethical problems when buying flowers and how can we be sure we're buying the right ones? Well, one of the main issues with intensively farmed commercial cut flowers at the moment is the impact they're having on the environment. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of flowers are intensively farmed in huge heated glass houses the size of several football pitches and obviously that's going to give off a lot of carbon. And another issue is that they're having a huge impact on the water in the countries. So ways to get around that, for example, are to try and sourcing flowers from places like Ecuador and Colombia. There are a lot of farms that are now focusing on being fair trade and being a lot more ethical about it. And basically transporting flowers from their country to their destination on passenger jets rather than freight planes, which is obviously makes a huge difference. We're championing British flower growers. We're trying to buy as much of our product from UK farmers as possible, which makes it you know, sort of hyper-seasonal, which I think is lovely anyway. Also by kind of monitoring the production methods and making sure it's all really fair trade and really ethical. Go to a specialist retailer, go to a florist, talk to them, ask them where their flowers have come from, and if they're good, you know, they'll be able to give you some answers. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, but have you ever thought about the way that they're traded and sourced? We've invited David from Diamond Company Ingle & Road onto our Valentine's sofa to find out about the ethics behind these sparkly gems. So David, welcome to our Valentine's special. Thank you very much. Can you tell us what are the biggest issues with ethically sourced diamonds? I think that most people these days are aware of the issues around conflict diamonds, uh, which are very much a problem in spite of what some people in the industry will tell you. There are still diamonds coming out of places like the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zimbabwe, uh, produced under the control of the military, being sold to fund further military activity. In addition to that, uh, in a lot of diamond producing areas in the world, there are other issues around people being exploited in the production. So for example, not getting paid properly for the work that they do, or diamond miners uh, working with very, very poor health and safety conditions. These days there are a handful of diamond brands who offer genuine traceability and they do that by laser inscribing unique tracking numbers onto each stone. And so the consumer uh, can then trace that number and uh, work out where exactly their stone is from and the conditions under which it was produced. Nobody wants their engagement and their marriage tainted with something that they don't think is ethical. Another 14th of February favourite is chocolate. But how delicious would it taste if you knew child labour had been involved in the making? I'm now joined on the sofa by Tola from Chocolat à Toi to find out where our chocolate really comes from. So Tola, welcome to our Valentine's special. Thank you. So can you tell me what are the biggest issues with non-ethically sourced chocolate? One of the biggest issues is with um, the farmers. Most of our chocolate comes from Ivory Coast or Ghana in West Africa. And um, there are issues surrounding the farmers in terms of child labor. Um, there are also issues you know, surrounding their pay, a lot of them live on as little as $5 a day. Since cocoa in these areas and these countries grows really fast, there are issues with taking care of the crops and um, pesticides. There are a lot of issues, but these are the key ones surrounding fair trade chocolate. So what would your piece of advice be for people buying chocolate Valentine's gifts this year? Well, when you go out, look out for the fair trade sign. Um, ask the chocolatier if they stock any um, fair trade products and enjoy Valentine. Flowers, chocolates and diamonds aside, Valentine's Day doesn't have to be about romance. There's fun to be had if you're single too. So, Anna Lucia, what are your top tips? Well, I think when it goes to throwing a party in general, here at Theme Traders we think you have to always go 110%. In terms of throwing an environmental party, it matters about looking in your house and seeing what you've got, what will work. The first thing we had were jam jars. Get some glitter, if not, you know, bits of coloured paper, bits of ribbon, bits of sticky stuff. Put in some tea lights and then you've got beautiful candles for the evening. Really simple but really works. Using card, we made these really wonderful kitsch little bags, which you could fill with, you know, sweet nothing notes, love hearts, whatever you want. In terms of upcycling as well, CDs are starting to, you know, people aren't using them as much anymore. We just took them, did a stencil, and then uh, made really 
cool kitsch drinks coasters. Give the planet a little Valentine's hug by buying ethically this year. And if you're throwing a singles party, enjoy. Big green love to you all from Green TV. Happy Valentine's Day.